Hello and welcome. Today we are going to be watching The Godfather. Now I know what you're thinking, mate. Okay, why? Tyler, Tyler, Tyler. Why have you not seen The Godfather, mate? You're 28 years old. This is ridiculous. It's embarrassing. And honestly, I started that bit without actually having an answer. I have no idea why. I don't know. Let's just drink. Don't we all feel better about ourselves? Now, I'll be honest, I'm really excited for this. Um, I'm also kind of nervous because like, I, just the way that it goes on YouTube, um, if I don't like this film, I know it's beloved, I know it's part of pop culture, and um, if I don't like it, I'm gonna get shit on. Stinkiest shit you can ever think of. I'm, I'm genuinely excited for the film. Um, I <laughs> I hope I like it, but if I don't like it, I will say, and I will tell you why, don't you worry, um, I always like to be as honest as possible and give a, a film a, sh a fair shake. So we shall see. If you are not familiar with my content, if you are a new uh, watcher to the channel, uh, just let you know, I will be stopping and starting quite a lot. It's a commentary channel, mostly. I do chat on quite a lot. I do, I, I'm not gonna apologize, I'm not sorry. <laughs> I'm not. That being said, let's strap ourselves in. I've got my jacket on, mate. I've got my jacket, like, right, okay. So um, this is the Marlon Brando one, right? I, I think, the Godfather the papa eh, eh, daddy and i thought right you know look i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna dress up for the occasion i've got to look my best and we've got to make a good impression mate so uh yeah without further ado uh thank you for joining me on this uh movie commentary and let's get going no honestly i've got really high hopes i i honestly think it, it's difficult isn't it because it's not always the case but you do kind of get to a point where where films get so mythical almost it's gotta be good man it's gotta be good right they made her drink whiskey uh oh they tried to take advantage of her. She kept her honor. Yes! So they beat her. Shit. Beautiful girl. Now she will never be beautiful again. Oh, well, come on. You say that like she's lost all value, mate. Let's just chill the fucking pump the brakes. Pump them, mate. I get it, 1972, right? All right, whatever. But just say, mate, beauty standards can fuck off. Oh, is he talking to Brando? We must go to Don Corleone. Oh, yeah. Oh, buddy. What's he going to do? What's he going to do? Just whap his massive... Why did you go to the police? Why didn't you come to me first? Good question. I love his voice already. Just the raspy Italian-American. I can't remember the last time that you invited me to your house for a cup of coffee. Oh, that's rude. You don't even think to call me Godfather. I'm guessing that's bad. Papa! He wouldn't like that. But I like it. Like, he's got standards, right? What have I ever done to make you treat me so disrespectfully? Mate, call him Godfather. Just say, just... Be my friend. Oh. Fucking hell, mate. Holy God, please. <laughs> Hands a fucking pitcher. Pitcher of wine, that's how you party, mate. That is how you party. Hey, Polly! I got two gabagoo! 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 No. Oh. Damn, no pictures at all. These guys are tight. These guys are running a tight operation, man. Yeah, I'm interested. I honestly don't know where this film... I, 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 I have no idea what this film's about. I bet that camera was so expensive. Shit. Oh, nice. Hey, hey. Do you know what? That's fair. Is it enough, though? Is it enough? But yeah, so sorry. Uh, briefly, pause. Uh, something that I really do enjoy about old films like this is that, you know, they do kind of adhere to a different style and theme. Obviously, obviously, right? Hollywood and the film industry nowadays is so, for the most part, there's a, there's some, something to be said about modern film and how it adheres to this kind of uh, cookie cutter formula. You know, it's very formulaic. There's not so much originality anymore. You know, you see all these memes about like, uh, I mean, you know, look, Willy Wonka's getting a prequel. Right, that's an example right there. It's all remakes and sequels, and it's not just that, but there's um, there's this idea now in uh, the film industry that that's what that's kind of what the film industry at the moment is known for. And when you go back in time, you know this is where we got all this from. You know, we're, we're making sequels and stuff about old stuff. So it's always exciting going back and seeing the things that have touched us and affected a lot of people, because I know that this film has, and it makes me excited, because I'm like, I don't know where it's gonna go, and it could, it's, there's every, every possibility that it's gonna surprise me, and, and that's what I always feel like. Uh, so just a little bit of a comment, I guess, on, you know, going back and watching old stuff, old films, you know, films from the 70s, 80s, and, and previous. Oh shit, that's not Al Capone, is it? It might be, you know. I am honored and grateful. You have invited me to your home. He's gonna fuck it up, isn't he? That man over there is oh, talking to himself. Incredible. That's okay. Man can do that. It's absolutely fine. Your father's been asking for him. If he's your brother, why does he have a different name? My father took him in. See, that's very kind. Don Colleon. Go on, mate. You got this. You got this. Come Grateful on, that yes. you have invited me to your daughter's wedding. Okay, hiccup, but you, you carry on, mate. You got it. You got this. I 
on the day of your daughter's wedding. Fuck. And I hope that their first child. Good. Masculine child. Okay, sure. Uh, Tyler, just keep, stay with it. I'm going to leave you now because I know you are busy. Nice. Hey, man did well. He did well. Well done, mate. You could tell he was nervous. He, do you know what? Eight out of ten, all right? There's, there's, you know, there's, there's work to be done. Oh, 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 oh. Hey. You want to touch my balls later? Hey, I don't know what she's saying, but I like it. Man, you breaking some moves at that fucking wedding, I'll tell you now. Look. Grandpa. Oh, mate. The passion. Go on. Yeah, sing it. Sing it. Oh, that was rude. That was rude. You know it was. Don't know what he said, but something to do with the penis. Penis was involved. Shit. No. Yes. Good recovery. I tell you what, that was a fucking good recovery, mate. This wedding is actually banging. Look at him. Granddaddy. I pray comes true. He's not the is he the, he's not the groom is he is he the groom because she is right up in his crotch area man sorry just just to pause for like a second and it will be a second it will be a second I love this I love you know and it's annoying that this seems brave nowadays but like it, we're twenty minutes we're nineteen minutes thirty nine in and nothing's happened it's all just this slow kind of and I wouldn't even say build up do you know what I mean I don't feel like we're necessarily building up to anything we're just relaxing into the film you know we're relaxing into getting to know these people to uh, you know it's this very kind of cordial it's, it's interesting as well the contrast between the uh, the the wedding and the feel and the atmosphere at the wedding you know it's very this very kind of fun casual people are singing dancing you know it's this thing and then you go into this room every so often with Don Corleone and it's very dark it's very kind of you know that you 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 get the sense that under the surface there's this sinister edge you know there's something there right and, and those two things contrasted together it's very interesting again 20 minutes it would be a rare film nowadays that did this kind of thing that actually stopped and took its time and didn't feel pressured to uh, hit this marker and this marker and this marker do you know what i mean this is just storytelling do you know what i mean you, you you read a book and there's character build up and you spend time with these characters and this is closer almost to a book right where, where you're reading the first chapter and you just get nothing's happening you're just getting to know the people that you know you're going to be spending the next 200 300 400 pages with that's what it feels like and uh, you know films nowadays it would be considered bold at least in my mind if films did this nowadays and it's just nice being able to relax into it and you know get to know these characters in a way that doesn't feel forced it's natural it's all conversations right don corleone he's not done anything bad but you there's an essence of power and in, in the conversations that he's having with these people the way that these people are treating him referring to him all this stuff did i say this would be brief sorry but you get what i'm saying right and i just wanted to comment on it a little bit because it's really interesting and I'm, and I'm enjoying that that's my family kid it's not me okay so he just said it's his family and not him I think we're going to see that change over the course of the film. We'll see. Maybe not, but we'll see. If I had this part in the picture, you know, this man out there, he won't give it to me. The head of the studio. What's his name? Man, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I don't know, sorry, pause. I don't know uh, like where you guys are in life and how you feel about all this stuff, right? But there's a question, isn't there, in um, our various societies, right? And I'm talking about Western culture in a way that it's, you know, we've got this capitalist society. It's very kind of, you know, cases to the rich and the poor kind of get shit on, right? There's this class divide, there's this hierarchy, despite us saying that we live in democracies. Ah, uh, that's a question, I feel. There's a lot to be talked about there. There's a lot to be said. For whether we do actually have a democracy i think there's very strong arguments against the fact that we have a democracy so have a conversation i don't want to just sit here talking about it so i'm not going to go into it deeply if you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about if you don't agree with me fair play to you absolutely fine when you see stuff like this and you know you had that guy there the singer talking to him so uh, my main profession what i consider my main profession to be is uh, i'm an actor now uh, yeah look can strike and you can ju you can just get one part and it just propels you but a lot of the time in the industry you need to know the right people and it doesn't matter how skilled you are it doesn't matter how talented you are actors that are really talented don't necessarily get anywhere there's a lot more involved what my point is is that you know we live in a world that fairness doesn't reign supreme in in a lot of ways and so when you see a film like this and you see that little scene there it makes you start to question a little bit of like how bad are these guys because they are essentially fighting back against those systems almost and the, by the way that's not me coming down and being like this is the way to go i just it's an interesting conversation topic i think a little a bit of an interesting thought exercise because um he just came to him there and he was like look i want to get into the film business this guy's saying no to me that's why i bring up my profession right corleone was just like what's his name and just in that one line it's like there's so much power there and i think considering everything that i've just said in the in the structures of how the world works and obviously the world's different now to how it was then but, you know, similar shades, I think. I'm always interested in trying to figure out how bad 
or good, you know, the moral scale, moral compass that people like this are on. You know, I think there's grayness there. It's interesting because it's like, I saw that scene and I reacted to it in a way of like, oh, fuck yeah, have a talk with that fucking guy, mate. Regardless of whether I agree or not on how Corleone goes about that. You can act like a man! Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of that in this film in there. I've, got to, I've just gotta get over that. Give Johnny the partner a new war film you're starting next week. Why don't you say you work for Corleone, Tom? This is one favor I can't give him. By the way, sorry, pause, relevant. I can't believe I didn't bring this up actually, but I am a, I'm gonna be a godfather. I, I am genuinely gonna be a godfather. All I'm saying is, get your fucking needs, mate. I am your godfather. I'm gonna run him out of the business, and let me tell you why. Ooh, okay, this guy's doubling down. Dancing lessons, I expect hundreds of- This guy literally being like, free food, mate, fucking- mm -hmm. And a man in my position can't afford to be made to look ridiculous. Of course you can't, egotistical prick. Thank you for the dinner and a very pleasant evening. This guy's a good lawyer. He doesn't say anything else than he has to. It's interesting, the story's very... It seems like it's being very focused. When it started and it was introducing you to all these characters, it felt like it was going to be this big sprawling film. Which it still might be. Oh shit. Ooh. Okay. Honestly, man's freaking out, fair play to him. But that could have been worse. Oh shit, that was his prized horse, wasn't it? Of course it was. Mate, how, sorry, how deep a sleeper is that guy? Someone comes walking into my room, period. I'm probably clocking that shit. If they put a fucking horse's head, that's heavy. Into the fucking foot, like the foot, like the, where my feet are. That guy's got to get sharp, mate. I need a million dollars in cash. Why do I deserve this generosity? I must say no to you. Oh, okay. Drugs is a dirty business. Are well, you telling me that the Talia's guarantee are invested? Wait a minute. They talk when they should listen. <laughs> I got the sense of this kind of stuff with like, the uh, thing that springs to mind is uh, 2001 Space Odyssey. Very slow scenes. By the way, I don't mean that in a, a negative way. I like that. And just, and by the way, and I was gonna say before, um, when the lawyer for Don Corleone and the old guy, the film guy, were having the dinner and he was going off on the lawyer. Just the acting so far in these one-to-one -one scenes, in these conversations is really good. I thought it then, and I'm mentioning it now because I'm seeing it again in this scene. There's something like slow and methodical and the actors are given time to act. I saw recently uh, the new Batman film. Doesn't matter if you haven't seen it, I'm not gonna spoil it or anything, but I did notice, for example, uh, that Robert Pattinson, and, and, and watch, and watch modern stuff, right? There is sometimes this predilection, and I don't know whether it's direction, I don't know whether it's the style of acting, I think maybe both. Lines are delivered in a way that's like, it's quite quick. Robert Pattinson was good, but he always delivered his lines in a way that was, like he was, it was a really good performance. I haven't really got anything to say about it negatively. It's more of a comment, but he delivered the lines very quickly. He didn't take time over them. He just kind of said them. And he said them in a very good way. And you know, that's a skill in itself. Point is, there's no like stopping and pausing, which is very human, very human thing to do. And I think it makes performances more realistic. And I think that's what we're getting from this is why I mention it. You know, it seems more human, more organic. Whereas like something like The Batman, which I consider a very good film, I really, really like that film for a lot of reasons. And I think it's more, it's just more of a modern thing that we have in our films and TV now, where we do have this idea that we've got to like, just, just kind of just crack these, like, these lines out. Just like, come on, come on, go, 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 say the line, say the line. Whereas with something like this, you, and older films, you get this sense there's this thing of like, okay, action and there's more freedom for the actors to just take their time and have this conversation do you know what i mean um and i'm, I'm getting a sense of that slowness which again is a good thing I, I like that i do a show every friday called breaking bad friday i do an episode of breaking bad every friday and um, that show is very good at it that show is very good at having slow conversations and taking its time there are moments where you are the camera is on the characters and they're not saying anything for these large periods of time which is I think for a lot of modern media is crazy. They do take their time over conversations and they feel real, they feel organic in the same way that this stuff does. And I think as the audience member, you do find yourself just like being drawn into it as a result of that. I want you to find out what he's got onto his fingernails. Yeah? Ooh, double agent. Are we trusting it to the right guy here? Uh, look, hey, no shade on him, but just saying, man, he had to rehearse one line a lot. Yeah, this is interesting. Is that Al Pacino? Hang on, I've got to Google it. Sorry, I'm interested in that that story thread because he seems like he's kind of more out of the family. And he was talking at the wedding about like, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's nothing to do with that, like the criminal stuff, right? So it's interesting. I'm wondering what place... Yeah, Al Pacino. Michael. Fuck, it is. Validation. But I'm wondering what room his storyline has 
in this story. It makes me curious, makes me think that he's going to get pushed into the darker sides of the family. So Corleone wants him to find out stuff. Shit. Shit. Oh man. Get in the car. This guy's picking wool against Corleone, isn't he? The car can explode? You think? Oh. Oh. Jesus. Oh dude, come on man, you gotta be better than that. Oh fuck. Is he dying? Oh shit. What? Oh mate, you did, you fucked up. Oh god, I didn't see that coming at all. I honestly thought this film centered on him. Mate, this is early. Oh, okay. Oh, great. Brave choice. What a brave choice, man. Dude, sorry, pause. They went fucking big dick, man. Hiring Brando for a role that essentially he was in this film for like 45 minutes. Not only that, they put him as the fucking top dog, man. Only to kill him. That's bold. That's bold fucking writing. That's a bold choice, man. So, okay. So I'm kind of seeing a little bit more of where Al Pacino comes in here. So he's kind of out of the family. I guess he's going to have to step up now, right? Man, I can't believe they did that. Shit. Feared me. Okay. So is he not going to be... Oh, mate, he's so young. I guess that's why they presented uh, Corleone as this powerful person. It's such a good story technique to establish that and then to shake it so quickly and then move forward. It, it kind of presents to the audience that this film can go anywhere. It puts you as the audience in this state of like, okay, didn't expect that. I don't know where I'm going now. And that excites the audience. It makes the audience anticipate. It grabs the audience by the throat. Daddy. Papa. Godfather, and sits them down, and then they're ready to go. Sonny was hot for my deal, wasn't he? Shit, in that meeting, when Sonny interrupted, and Corleone was like, dude, that showed this guy that Sonny wanted in, and that was exactly why he did it, right? I'm sure there were other things influencing the decision as well, but that's what threw him over into getting rid of Corleone, right? He's still alive. Oh. With five shots and he's still alive. Shit. Right, Michael. I think I feel like Michael is going to be thrust into the thick of things here. Is it the fact that it's Al Pacino making me think that? Maybe. I wonder if it's he's going to establish himself in the family in a way that he clearly hasn't been before because he was out of it and he was doing his own thing, right? And he was away with his uh, partner and whatever. I think it's priming for Michael to take over just because of Sonny. I think out of all these guys, Sonny's the one to take over, right? He would be the one to take over. My point is that I don't think he's in a position to lead in a, in a, in a way that would be, be powerful and re-establish the power that the Corleone family have. Maybe Michael's the one to do that, do you know what I mean? Uh, maybe we shouldn't get Mike uh, mixed up in this too directly. Why? I do kind of want to know why. Why has he been pushed out? I mean, he's a local brass, he sleeps with the fishes. Yeah, Michael seems very unshaken, kind of telling me that he could be a part of this world. Because Sonny doesn't seem like the kind of guy who's a thinker. He's very brash, he's not a calming presence. Whereas Michael, he's got this very clean cut kind of life that's outside of the purview of everything that Corleone had, has. And yet when he came back in and he's been a part of this, he's, he's not lost his shit. Hey man, I'm here for it. I want to see, I want to see these transitions. That's where I feel like it's going to go. A bit of wine. I love that these guys just keep whining fucking massive pitches. That's the way I live, man. Uh, well, probably not healthy. Probably not healthy. I'll be all right. Salozo knows he's a civilian. Why is he, why is he a civilian? Oh, there we go. Whining wine glasses. That seems weird. What are you doing? Jeez, mate. Announce yourself. There's nobody here. What happened to the guards? The police made them leave about 10 minutes ago. Uh oh. Nurse, wait a minute. Stay here. Mm, I wonder. First step, maybe? To my call. Getting in. Papa's all alone. Panic, He's not panicking at all. You and I are gonna move, move my father to another room. Look at him, thinker, thinker. And he's calm, he's calm. He's like, right, okay, I see what's happening. Let's fucking deal with it. Men are coming here to kill him. There you go. See, he's ready, he's ready. He's gonna, he's gonna take over, I think. I think he did, um, he did have an army uniform on, I think, at the wedding, right? He's not unfamiliar, I'd say, with uh, high octane scenarios. Let's say he's uh, he's got a calm head in a crisis, and I would believe that based on those little little tells, right? That you you you're kind of fed as the audience. Oh, he shimmied up those stairs. Oh, Come here. put your hand in your pocket like you have a gun. Nice, nice, because obviously they expected it to be empty, right? Because there's two guys inside, it's like, well, how many are inside? Nice. 
That shows that he's clever too. What happened to the men who were guiding my father, Captain? Why, you little punk. I pulled them guys off of here, eh? Interesting. Yeah, all this is doing here is making Michael angrier. Wait, Captain. So what hero? What hero? Okay, there we go. After the hospital thing, Sonny got mad. Of course he did. Another seed that shows that Sonny's not really ready or appropriate for a leadership role. Hey, Michael, come here. Let me look at you. Interesting. So if Michael does take over, he's got to get past Sonny at this point. That's the thing. So I imagine we've got to have some kind of confrontation between those two. This is business, not personal. Well, then business will have to suffer, all right? Mm. And we're just seeing how Sonny's not, a pro like, he shouldn't be in charge. Now, nobody has ever gunned down a New York police captain, never. All the five families would come after you, Sonny. All right, wait. Good, but I just get the sense that Sonny's a ticking time bomb. Can't wait. Michael, hey, hello. Gotta get some that song. Yeah, look how quickly Michael's kind of sat down and he's part of it again. It will be me, Klusky, and Salazzo. And here we go, he's taking a little bit of power. Now we insist it's a public place, a bar, a restaurant, some place where there's people so I feel safe. I'm seeing more Don Corleone in Michael. I'll kill them both. And you see he's got that ruthlessness too. <laughs> Alright, mate. <laughs> interesting. Okay, interesting. What are you gonna do? Nice college boy, yeah? Right. Pause. So sorry, I will play this because I think it's important. All of these people see him as the good boy. So that just lays the foundation for people underestimating Michael. And he just showed, and I believe it because of all the things that I've just been saying, that he's ruthless and he's willing to do that. And now you want to gun down a police captain? Why? Because he slapped you in the face a little bit? You're taking us very personally. Interesting. <laughs> the way that he was just taking it very personally before. Come on, Mikey. Tom, wait a minute. I'm talking about a cop. And he's already, when Sonny presents it, it's like, we've got to kill the cop. And the lawyer's like, okay, we've got to make this, you're making this personal, it's business. Sonny's then like to Michael, well, you, you're making this personal, man. Just chill the fuck out. I, I appreciate the irony there, but also, the fact that Michael is now immediately questioning the order of things. He's like, why, wh where the fuck does it say we, we can't kill a cop? And no one's telling him, like, hey, you're making this personal. Like, because he's presenting it in a way that's calm. And I guess maybe they underestimate him as well, right? So they don't really think he's that serious. But, like, it's just interesting. It's, it's, it's interesting from a character perspective. That's the only reason I'm bringing it up. And I just find it oh, interesting. Play. We have newspaper people on a payroll, don't we, Tom? They might like a story like that. Manipulate it. All it takes is the right presentation. It's not personal, son. Hmm. Strictly business. There you go. Fuck, man. Oh, okay. Shit. Okay. Do I like this film? I think I like. I like this film. I think I like this film. <laughs> Whoo! All right. You shot him both. Now what do you do? Good. Let's go through it. Role play, mate. Sit down. Finish my dinner. Nice. Probably all the other families will line up against us. That's all right. This isn't gonna happen every five years or so. <laughs> the way that they're just talking about it is so cavalier. Yeah, I just see Sonny getting replaced by Michael. I get it. Just that there, sorry, again, pause, goes back to what I was saying before. What kind of modern film would put that kind of thing into it and would be so bold and, and feel like they could enhance the runtime? Look at look at the stuff nowadays that's in deleted scenes and how there are certain deleted scenes that people are like, why the fuck didn't you put that in the film? That, you know, that gives so much more story, so much more context, so much more background for some character. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it, you know, you, you find deleted scenes and you're excited to see deleted scenes because they're so important or entertaining. And it's like, right, if they're one of those two things and people want to see them, put them in the film. There was a moment just there where they were talking and then he literally walked, uh, what, like, I don't know, seven yards to a phone, took a call you couldn't hear, and then walked all the way back and they lingered. That's insane when you talk about modern film. No one in modern filmmaking does that. And if they do, it's indie. It's indie films, right? God, I'm an old fart, I guess. Do you know what I mean? I like that. I do like that stuff. And that just shows the mindset and the tone and the, and the fucking balls that these people have making this film because they, they, they're like, no, this is, we're just gonna fucking sit in it, man. We're gonna sit in it and we're gonna tell the story and the audience are gonna fucking like it. You don't forget. Two shots a piece in the head as soon as you come out the door. I guess that's maybe why Don was like, no, keep Michael out of this. Because he was, he went away to war. He was a war hero. He came back and Don was probably like, no, he's a war hero. Leave him alone. The people in the, sh in the film have already said like, Don was very proud of that. Let's see how it goes. Oh. 
something, it's a very small thing. Something that I love. We just had like a little bit there, again, where it's doing the same thing. The film is taking time to just do these little things that are human and relatable. They're sitting around and the film is just lingering on this waiter, opening the bottle and pouring. It's making you as the audience like just watch that. I think as the film lingers on that stuff, it draws you into the world. I feel like I'm part of it. It makes you as the audience imagine all those times you've been in that situation where there's been a waiter there next to you and there, you know, you're kind of looking across at the person you're with, they're opening the wine, no one quite knows what to do. It's like a social thing that happens when you go to a restaurant. And so it connects you because you have those experiences and so it shows you that experience and it's like, okay, I'm in as the audience because I've been through this. Those little scenes that um, I think modern films feel are so unimportant are so important to making you as the audience feel like you're part of it, regardless of whether the actions and the events in the film are so apart from your own life. Wait, should I, hang on, should I know what's happening here? Should I have subtitles on? No, I shouldn't. Okay, so we as the audience are not supposed to know what they're talking about right now, because they it has done subtitles previous to this. Right, am I just having a technical fault here? Did they really put a scene in the film that I just, I'm not supposed to understand if I only speak English? Shit, dude. All I want is a truce. You try and kill Don Corleone and you want a truce? Well, hello, buddy. Fucking hell. Just him. He's clean. He just wanted a little bit of fiddle around with his penis, mate. This is gonna be interesting. Is it gonna be there? <laughs> Shit. Fuck. Okay. Okay. You got it, Mike. You got it. Are you going to do it immediately because you've instantly aroused everyone's suspicion? Come on, mate. Oh, tell you what, mate. Amazing acting in this little bit here. And again, two. Good. Do you know what? Hey, for his first time doing this kind of thing, went well. So, fuck. Where do we go now? Like, where do we go now in the film? But that's a great place to be in as the audience because there's like... Great. Surprise me. Oh, dude. There's another hour and a half of the film. We're halfway through it, pretty much. As someone who has never watched this before, I don't really know where it's going. All I can say is that Michael, maybe, is going to establish himself as someone in the family, the Corleone family, as someone, you know, a bit higher up, someone with more power. Oh, he's fine then. Okay. Right, Vito Corleone. So Don was definitely a title. Fair play. Good to know. So he's back. Okay. Question is whether he recovers fully or not. Because I don't think he's going to. Michael. Good question. Nice that he's on Michael because, yeah, he's the fucking one, mate. Yeah, sorry, I would be commenting more on Marlon Brando's uh, performance, but honestly, I've not seen a lot of his stuff. I imagine it's really good, but I'd need to see more of him, one as him, and two in other roles to really properly judge this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're getting a great reputation. I hope you're enjoying it. But you just do what I tell you to do. Mm, see, Sonny again just showing that he's not ready for this shit, man. I'm just, I didn't mean that. Yeah, and he keeps doing this. He keeps being sorry and like just like going all the way up here and then being like, I'm mm, sorry, I'm sorry. And it's like, dude, you can't do that. Yeah, interesting. So sorry. So yeah, pause. A little thing. But right, so, so I haven't got subtitles on and it does give you subtitles when they're talking Italian. And so there was that scene when Michael was having the conversation with the guy in Italian and it wasn't telling you. The subtitles didn't come up, which is very on purpose. And so my mind automatically goes like, why, why, did, why did they do that? And I think honestly, like, look, okay, um, maybe this is my personal opinion, my personal experience of stuff like that. But like me personally, I was like, I was panicking because I was like, I'm missing it. I'm missing it. Oh shit. Have I fucked up? Have I fucked up? Blah, 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 blah. And I can't concentrate on it like as, as much as I want to. I don't know if, if everyone had that reaction when, when they saw this film. I think maybe the intent there was to cause, because that, that, that scene and everything running up to that. And even I was talking about the fact that I don't know how that's going to go. I don't know if it's going to go smoothly. I don't know, you know, there's so much you don't know. It's this thing like Michael's there going there to hit the guy, right? He's going there to kill them. And it's like, right, okay, as the audience are like, okay, is this, is this going to go off well? Is this going to be something that goes smoothly? Blah, 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 blah. You're putting these stakes there. And then it's like, as the audience member, you're making the audience member sit back and be like, right, how are we going to unnerve them? 
And I feel like that unnerves you as the audience because you don't know what they're saying. So it's like, right, okay, all this stuff I don't know. And now the film is like, and now you don't know what they're saying. And it's like, whoa, okay, okay, shit, uh, blah, 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 blah. And I, and I think the reason for that is to put you more firmly in this position of not knowing and this position of anticipation. I think it serves, especially when he was like searching around for the gun, it put me in a place where I was like, I don't know if he's gonna find it. I don't know if he's gonna be there. And it just, it, it, it adds to this tension and it adds to this feeling of, I don't know if this is gonna work out, man. And I think that really uh, serves to uh, lend itself to that tension, the buildup of that. I think that's why if there's another reason or if I'm missing something, please do tell me. If I've missed something, then I don't know what it is. From what I can tell, that's why they put that in there. Mm, who knows? Ah, uh, see, I know Vendetta's from Peaky Blinders. Fucking educated, mate. That's all I'm saying. Oh, love at first sight. <laughs> I think he fucking did, mate. <laughs> Interesting. So, Michael has totally broken from the girl that he was with then. Maybe? Oh, I'm getting vibes. Who is she? No. He does. He fucking does. Well, that's a lie, sir. Fucking, hey, slander. No. Hey! What happened? Is it his daughter? Is it his daughter? Ah! <laughs> it fucking is! It fucking is amazing. Interesting that Michael was like bringing him here. What kind of things has he been getting up to in his little hideaway? And I meant no disrespect to you or your daughter. Again, I'm seeing a lot of Don vibes from him. But then your daughter would lose a father instead of gaining a husband. Oh shit, he is inserting himself in there, man. Okay then. Going straight to fucking marriage. Just say hi. Hi, how are you? Oh, hello. They're getting on. They're getting on, mate. We are essentially getting like a love montage here. Fair play. Oh, I tell you what, mate. That needed reframing, that one, mate. Because that did not connect at all. Beat a man with his own shoes. That's oh me, oh. <laughs> okay. Oh fuck, they're married now. Okay, I got. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, this film is called The Godfather. I wonder, and it's nothing new. I, I feel like I've been kind of saying this the whole film, but I feel like Michael is being prepped for becoming this Godfather figure. So, what was his relationship with the other girl? Because he has just sacked her off, mate. And I think, honestly, the, the uh, scene that we had before of him uh, confronting the father was actually very different to what we'd seen Michael do before. While I've said what I've said, and he seems very calm and capable when he did the shooting, I think there was an element there of, oh shit, I'm a, a little bit, this is, it was his first time, he's a little bit out of his depth. Right, there's an element of that. While I'm talking about all this stuff and him being ready and, and I think there's still uh, an element of greenness to him. And I think what we've seen since he's been in Italy and the Italy scenes and the, the scene with uh, this girl's father showed a much more assertive Michael. And now he's in a position of like, okay, now he's fucking primed to come back into the family and take control. I think that's what that little time skip does. Those are tits. That's that's some that's two tits right there. I mean, I've tried writing and calling. Oh, that's his partner. Fuck! I thought they were just gonna brush her aside. I think the only way that this can go now is Michael coming back and deposing Sunny. That's where I feel like the conflict is gonna be going forward. We'll see. Oh fucking hell, shit, he's getting the belt out. Oh my god, that was a practice technique, mate. He knew what he was doing. No, do you know what? This is one of the times I'm actually on board with Sonny's fucking anger issues. Oh shit. Oh, okay. Oh fuck, he's fucked, he's fucked. Dude, they got him dead to rights, mate, you know? Honestly, I thought it was gonna be a, a clash between Sonny and Michael. Actually, I honestly thought that was what was going to happen, which to me would have been more interesting because it's more personal. Uh, it's a little bit like I'll reserve judgment for that because um, honestly, this is interesting as well. You know, I think there's a missed opportunity there. That's what I'm thinking right now. But at the same time, this is interesting because 
he's essentially the head of the family. To this point, we've been uh, led to believe that they have sorted the problem. And this shows they haven't. And so it's like, right, who's still got power? Who's still against them? And dude, Don's still not dead. Vito Corleone is still not dead. I honestly think the only, the, the, the time we're going to get the Corleone family asserting themselves again is when Michael comes back. This is what uh, I think Michael has been prepared for by the film. Yeah, he's not together. I think that's the point of what they're trying to show us right here. I think he's on the out. They shot Sonny on the causeway. Oh, ooh, that was nicely done. Shit, man. I should watch more of Marlon Brando's shit. Just to see. Just to see. Interesting, because we're seeing a vulnerable side of Don Corleone, which I wouldn't have imagined seeing at the beginning of the film. Look how they massacred my boy. Oh, there's a meme. There's a quote. Yeah. I feel like that's always the case, isn't it? Young people are ruining everything. Oh, they don't respect anything. Uh, I think we're destined as a race. It's the human race to always think that. I'm sure in 30 years, I'll think the same thing. I'll be looking at the youth and be like, what the fucking shit is this about, man? I think the best thing you can do is to open yourself to learning and always be feeling like you can change. Sorry, I just, I, I find that interesting because obviously this was 1972 based on, I think it was 1940s. It's just interesting because I don't think that ever goes away. Yeah, let's see how Michael reacts. He's gonna go back. Oh, shit, hang on, what? Oh my goodness, come on. Is this film what? what do you mean no no he just got oh my goodness that's gonna twist him that's gonna twist him so bad and i don't blame him fuck me jesus christ you expect me to go forward with that fucking shit he's gonna come back to america and he's gonna be fucking vengeful i wonder if michael's gonna come back he's gonna be like i want blood and don's gonna be like no no, no, no that's not good for business and michael's gonna push a refusal is not the act of a friend he must let us Draw the water from the well. This is interesting because this is a, it's a conflict that we've seen pause uh, since the beginning of the film. Don was like, no, 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 I'm not getting into narcotics. He's still fighting back against it. I feel like Don, uh, Vito Corleone, I feel like he's not moving with the times. You talk about vengeance. Is vengeance going to bring your son back to you? It's interesting, I isn't it? The vengeance this stuff. Son. I get the sense of Don Corleone being this person that is very dangerous, but I'm not seeing it so much. He does seem, in these meetings, like a person that is very... He agrees on the compromise. He's very reasonable. He's powerful, but he's not pushy with the power. He's very polite. He's saying now, like, you lost your son, I lost my son. Let's just, just come on. Let's just chill out. And I don't feel like that's going to help him. And I feel like that's actually what got him into the situation. And it's putting Don at risk. And if some unlucky accident should befall him, if he should get shot in the head by a police officer. The thing I would say about Marlon Brando's acting is that he maintains the person that he's playing really well. And, and it means that the camera can linger on him. But I didn't know until this day that it was Barcini all along. Wait, what? Oh shit, hi. Hello, sir. Tip the hat. No. Okay, fine. I've been back a year. Oh, I go. Oh my God. That's a long time. Don't clarify. It's good to see you, Kate. Is it? He's gone through a wife. You know how naive you sound. Naive. Presidents don't have men killed. Oh. <laughs> Are you Who's sure? Naive, Kate? Yeah. In five years, the Corleone family is going to be completely legitimate. Okay. Michael, why did you come here? I came here because I need you. Really? Really? I want you to marry me. What? Uh, what? You just married... Okay, sure. Okay. I need you. But again, it shows us that he is a colder character than we're led to believe at the outset. Man, could you imagine the amount of people that were fucked up when the door 
changed do you know what i mean because like he opened the door that way and it's like obviously we open it the other way now it's like can you imagine if you were like in the fucking overlap of that decision and like you had cars and like suddenly you're opening them and it's like oh for fucks that would annoy the shit out of me i'll be honest with you you once said that the day would come when tessio and me could form our own family he's looking like less slick in his private this is the same room he's looking less together he looks together in the uh the business meetings the, in the public but when he's private well, michael is now head of the family right and i hate that goddamn barzini interesting they're really turning away from michael here do i have your loyalty yes always don't be a friend to michael mm. there we go and good on him he's pushing him towards michael that's exactly what they need, the family needs. I'm only surprised by the ease with which Michael has taken over. I didn't think it was going to be this easy. I thought maybe we'd get a little bit more of a juicier uh, path to this, which I'm not upset about not getting because at the end of the day, I'm 2.17, 2 hours 17 into the film. 30, 40 minutes left, there's still a lot to happen, right? It's a long film, it's a long film, so I, 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 I could see why perhaps maybe they didn't go that way to save time, to perhaps get to something later, do you know what I mean? Like, it's it's, it's, it's not a big deal. But, um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised by that, I'd say. Mike, why am I out? You're not a wartime consigliere, Tom. Ooh, we're getting war divisions here. There's people that go to war that very much, not look down, but look differently on those that don't go to war. Who are the girls? Get rid of them, Fredo. Nice. He's such a thinker. I, I live for this shit. It's so rewarding as the audience to be watching that stuff. Everything that I expected to happen with Michael, for example, like me personally, and my opinion on where Michael is going to go, it's exactly where Michael's gone. And that's so rewarding to the audience. And I think we underestimate that sometimes. When I sit down to watch a film, that's what I want to see, man. I want to see these characters be developed in ways that are exciting and to see them in this different position and to believe it. And it makes the audience feel like they're getting, like if you imagine it as a sandwich, they're not just getting a bite, they're getting the fucking whole sandwich, mate. And that is exactly what you should be giving the audience every single time. And that's what I feel like I'm getting here, which I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying that. I'm really enjoying that. Can I, the eye contact, look at this shit. You can see with his body language, how in control he is. And I think that's down to the writing, but it's down to the actor. I think Al Pacino's doing a really, really good job with that shit play. Mole loves the business. He never said nothing to me about selling. Yeah, well, I'll make him an offer he can't refuse. Hello. The casino. The hotel. Corleone family wants to buy you out. Corleone family wants to buy me out. Oh, you ain't happy. First of all, you're all done. The Godfather's sick, right? You're getting chased out of New York. Oh. Is that why you slap my brother around in public? <sighs> We had a little argument, Freddie and I, so I had to straighten him out. You straightened my brother out. Oh, yeah, okay. We're well, seeing the Michael that I was talking about before. I feel like we're seeing Michael inhabit the role that Don Corleone, Vito Corleone, was at the beginning of his tenure. Tom, you're the conciliary, and you can talk to the Don, you can explain. Just a minute. Oh, you're going over Michael's head. And Mike is in charge of the family business now. Right. You don't come to Las Vegas and talk to a man like Mo Green like that! He ain't playing by the rules. Don't ever take sides with anyone against the family again. Oh, that's what I want to see. I like to drink mine more than I used to. Hey, man, you earned it. And I refused to be a fool dancing on the string held by all those big shots. Man, no cuts at all. Shit, he's gone. Damn. Right, so he has literally just gone out. Okay. I'm hooked, by the way. Jesus. Oh, is this Michael taking over? Because this, this would track with how Michael has been very proficient. Tom, can you get me off the hook? Shit, he's asking. Only don't tell me you're innocent, because it insults my intelligence. Mm, so interesting. And, I, and this is exactly where I saw Michael going. But it's kind of good to see that I was right. And to see Michael as this. Jeez, okay. Yeah, no, Michael has really taken over. This one time I let you ask me about my affairs. Okay. Is it true? No. Ooh. 
Is he lying? Interesting, because we're getting that contrast from this moment to the beginning of the film, where he's being like really open with her. Bad Corleone. There we go. And close the door, yeah. I honestly think the film as a whole was very much to show that transition of Don Corleone, which seems very simple. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it's like, right, okay, if you go nowadays to um, a studio and you pitch that kind of a film, so like, how far do you get? And then, like, you know, the people that you're pitching to, and it's like, they they can look at you, and it's like, then what? And it's like, no. That's the film. But like the film that I just watched was so nuanced. It was so detailed. And the way that they shot it was so intricate and nuanced as well. I think to a certain extent, I got to a point in this film where I was like, okay. Like, I mean, you saw me, right? Predicting at the beginning of the film that Michael was gonna take over. And that's basically what happened in the film. I got to a place where I was like, okay, I kind of know where it's going. And I was enjoying it happening, by the way. I should absolutely just say, and watching that happen and how it was happening. I thought maybe it would be more exciting in the way that it happened. I thought perhaps, you know, obviously Sonny was this, this powerful figure in the family. And I thought perhaps Michael was gonna come in and challenge that, and he didn't. Obviously Sonny just went, how he got killed. If there's any criticism about the film, it was that because to me, to my mind, they didn't take advantage fully of that kind of conflict. I've compared modern film and the modern industry to this. And I think if I saw a film like this nowadays, I'd be like, oh, for fuck's sake, they're just trying to set up a sequel. Fuck, just give me a good story. Whereas with this, I don't get the sense that they were necessarily setting up a sequel. I feel like they were just setting down to tell a story. The impression that I was left with towards the end of the film was like, okay, they've told me this like story that's got this character to this, to, to this place in a really interesting and entertaining way to the point that now, I'm interested in where that character goes going forward, which makes the idea of a sequel interesting, which is what I would challenge modern film on because I'm like, I don't think modern film necessarily does that. I think modern film kind of does that stuff for a sequel, whereas this film exists to first and foremost be a film and then to go forward. And I think that formula is very much not how it works now. But anyway, I enjoyed the film. I really enjoyed the film. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, commentary. If you disagree, that's absolutely fine. Let me know down in the comments below what you think. If you'd like to support me, there are some links down below as well. I've got a Patreon where I do exclusive content. If you've not subscribed to the channel, if you are new to the channel, please do consider subscribing, ticking that notification button. It is free, mate. But other than that, mate, honestly, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will hopefully see you next time.